Hey guys, it's Teeksy here and welcome back to the channel. So recently guys, we've obviously been bringing a few more Modern Warfare 2019 gameplays to the channel and it kind of got me thinking that because I started my channel during the Cold War year, I never kind of got to, to do any kind of different or, or fun videos surrounding Modern Warfare 2019. So today guys, I'm going to be ranking all of the Modern Warfare 19 6v6 multiplayer maps from worst to best and uh, yeah guys uh, I know this map this game wasn't exactly known for its map but we'll try and break it down the best we can and as always uh, this is just my opinion guys love to hear what you guys think in the comment section but just respect my opinion and I will respect yours so jumping in guys and starting us off at number 18 and the worst map in Modern Warfare 19 in my opinion was Azure Cave now like I say there were a lot of bad maps in Modern Warfare 19 it wasn't exactly known for its maps um, and I think as well a big thing for me is that I don't really play Search and Destroy and I feel like Search and Destroy was the one game mode everyone goes on about in MW19 and, and obviously Search and Destroy can, can change your opinion on maps but for me Azure Cave was just an absolutely terrible build. Um, there was nothing that I liked about this map, the map layout made no sense, it was just a horrible map, so many different angles players could come from and yeah for me I just don't remember having any fun on this map. Coming in at number 17 guys is Arkloff Peak, again this is just another one of those where I think for respawn it was just too big, it was just generally too big, I think if you maybe got 10v10 on this map it, it could have, have been a little bit better but for 6v6 you just felt like you were running around a lot trying to find people and you know you'd end up, the game would end, you've got like 15 kills and, and you kind of think well what did I just do, what have I wasted my time doing there because you just can't find players so Arkloth Peak comes in at 17. At 16 guys we've got Meow Store Tank Factory, hopefully I've pronounced that right, I've probably butchered it completely, um, is again the same kind of thing guys for 6v6 respawn, this map's just too big, it's just generally too big, I don't know what it was with them making big maps on this game, um, I think you know it would have been alright if certain maps had been kept out of, of rotation and maybe were just in 10v10. Um, because obviously without map voting as well, that, that was a big thing in Modern Warfare 19. But yeah, this map again, it's just generally, it was too big. You know, you couldn't find anybody. You'd have pretty slow games and, and that's just really not enjoyable for anyone. At 15, we've got Grazna Raid. And again, this kind of just follows the same pattern as the last few maps. Again, it's just too big. Too big for 6v6. Um, just, you know, no enjoyment to be had. Uh, you know, you can't find anybody, you can't get any kills, you know, I hate to repeat myself, but that's just kind of, you know, that's that's all you can really say about this map. And number 14, we've got Ania Incursion, so this map wasn't too bad, it was it was obviously a lot better than the, the Palace version, I mean, this, this is what confuses me about this game, is that they had Incursion, which was like a 6v6 map, and then in 10v10 you got Palace, but if you play 10v10 on, on the Incursion map, in my opinion that would have been much better, but 10v10 on the Annie of Palace map was just absolutely ridiculous because the map was just, they, they added four players to each team but extended the map by an absolutely ridiculous amount. I don't know guys, Annie Incursion for me was an okay 6v6 map, but you know, there's not too many good things you can kind of say about that map or the Palace version. Coming in at 13 is Al Rab Airbase. So this is a map that I didn't really get to play too much. I think it was one of the latter maps to join the game. Um, I've had a few runs on it. It's not too bad. Um, you know, it's it's not too big, but it's it's still maybe a little bit on the larger side. And again, it just feels like a lot of the time you're kind of searching for people. But I suppose in its defence, you know, one of the problems nowadays is it can be difficult to get full lobbies. So I guess, you know, that doesn't always help the, the kind of experience if you're on a map and, and you haven't got a full lobby. Coming at number 12 is Piccadilly, now this might be controversial that this map is so high up the list but ultimately for me with Piccadilly, did I like the map? No. Was it a good map layout? No. But ultimately for me, I found some, I found more success on this map than I did on, on the maps I've listed off so far. I think at least, you know, it wasn't huge, you know, it, it just, it didn't have a great layout but at least you could kind of find players and you kind of had a rough idea on where people were but ultimately, you know, I, I don't ever want to see this map ever again you know it's another one of them it always comes out in rotation you can't vote to skip it it's it's just so frustrating and number 11 guys we've got Ramaza now Ramaza was I don't think this map was too bad I mean it, it had a lot of different you know alleyways areas places you could be you know there was you know some of the map was down low some of the map you know there was high points and you know I'm not going to sit here and say that it was a good map but I feel like it was it was okay you know once you got used to it and you could kind of run around with you know an SMG and hunt people out but ultimately I think a lot of the time on this game the the squad spawns and the way the spawns worked really didn't help them out but Ramaza in at 11 just missing out on a top 10 spot so as we move into the top 10 guys we've got St Petrograd at 10 um this map again it wasn't too bad it wasn't terrible 
but it wasn't anything spectacular either. Um, I think it had a slightly better layout than um, you know some of the other maps we've had. But again, it just it just feels like almost every map on this game was just it just just felt big. Um, you know, obviously it wasn't I don't think quite as big as some of the ones we've already listed off. But ultimately, it was just one of them where you know you could have fun with it. It, it wasn't too bad, but you know enough enough and too much else to say about it. Coming at number nine was Atlas Superstore. Um, this was a cool setting for a map. This this was a cool setting for a map, um, and I feel like it it wasn't too bad. It was for the most part, you know, three lane map design. Um, it, it wasn't too big. Again, it, it felt a bit bigger. I think it was just just generally how this game's maps were built. Um, it probably suited ten v ten a little bit better than six v six, but ultimately it wasn't too bad. It was just one of their maps that because so much of it was set indoors, there was you know not too much you could do kind of with aerial score streaks. Coming to number eight is Cheshire Park. Now this was one of the map pack max and. Generally speaking, it wasn't too bad of a map, you know, simple three lane map design. Um, but it just, I don't know what it was about this map. It just felt like it was really easy to get stuck on this map, like stuck in spawn or you stuck, just you couldn't move. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it was just weird. I just never really found that much success on this map. I think it was better in terms of, you know, it was a lot, a little bit smaller. There was a lot more action going on, but just generally it felt easy to get stuck on this map. And for me, it's only good enough for number eight. Coming at number seven is Soldo Harbour, um, another one that I've probably butchered the, the pronunciation of that. But yeah, again, this map was, again, smaller, which I think helped, but it kind of had a little bit of a strange layout. And sometimes it just felt like there wasn't too many different angles you could go in respawn. Like, um, I think that you, you know, there was that one side of the map where, you know, like the little alleyway that kind of leads from one side of the map to the other. It was very easy for people to hold that from either top of the stairs or from the other side of it, those like little head glitches and, and containers and things you could get on. So I think ultimately for me, um, it was an okay map, but it, it a lot of the time just depended on, on the type of lobby you were in. Were, you with, were players holding angles or were they not? Could you get through mid-map? If you couldn't, then it, it could get a little bit boring. And number six, guys, and just missing out on a top five spot is Gunrunner. Um, I don't think Gunrunner was a terrible map. Um, I think, again, it's just one of them where... It's one of the better maps in Modern Warfare 2019, but it's not a stellar or stunning map. And I think that just goes to kind of show the kind of map design in Modern Warfare 2019 and, and where we're coming at, you know. But, you know, Gunrunner for me, it was a, it was a pretty solid map, um, you know, and, uh, you know, you could have some good fun on it, you could have some good games and uh, for me, but not just quite not good enough to, to hit a top five spot. So kicking us off at number five is Shoot House. Now, Shoot House was ultimately one of the better maps in Modern Warfare 29 and it was definitely helped from the fact that it was much smaller and I think that the smaller maps in this game were always going to have that kind of advantage because you know if you've played a few big maps you know you can't find anyone you'd much rather play a small map where you where you can get a lot of gunfights and a lot of action but for me shoot house just it was a bit overrated in my opinion it felt like sometimes you couldn't really move you know it felt like mid map or like the mid alley you know was not really legitimate it wasn't really good to go there because people could just hold it with snipers from both sides of the map which meant you kind of had to stick to the edge of the map um, and sometimes it could be a little bit frustrating but ultimately you know it was definitely one of the better maps in modern warfare 2019 and number four we've got petrov oil rig now i don't know this is a little bit of a wild card for me i really thought this was a cool setting for a map i really enjoyed this map um i think it played reasonably well for 6v6 it probably benefited a little bit from 10v10 but ultimately it was just one of those maps that i just seem to have a lot more fun on um it and just just generally that was kind of it you know it was one of the better maps for me um one of the maps like i said i could have more fun on and for me petrov oil rig in at number four and, and generally not not a bad map in my opinion so at number three, guys, we've got Hackney Yard, you know, definitely one of the, be the better maps in this game. And I think that Hackney Yard, probably one of very few that you would say if it returned in a, in a future Call of Duty, you wouldn't be against it. Um, you know, it, it played really well, you know, three lane map design. Um, you know, you felt like you, you could you had things on the map you could work with. You could kind of move around it. You didn't really get stuck. And it, worked. it was a good size as well. You know, there was always a lot going on. You were always involved in a lot of gunfights. And for me, Hackney Yard in at number three um, as one of the better maps in the game. And number two, guys, we've got Hovex Sawmill. So this is another one, a little bit of a wild card, but I just always enjoyed this map. Like, for whatever reason, this map just suited my playstyle. I don't know why. I always had good games on this map, um, you know, and I think that always kind of adds to the element of a map. You know, obviously, map design is very important, um, but I think if you have that one map that you just, for whatever reason, enjoy playing or play well on, it's always going to be a map that you enjoy. And Hovex Sawmill was one of them. It was, it was one of them whenever it was 
you know, in the rotation. I was happy that you couldn't vote to skip it because I, I wanted to play it, but I, I never really know how popular it is with other people. But yeah, Hovik saw me in at number two, and again, I wouldn't be against this map returning in future Call of Duties, but I don't really know if it's one of the favourites with, with the, the kind of community. And coming at number one, guys, and my favourite map in Modern Warfare 2019 was Candle Hideout. I just love this map from the word go. From the moment it dropped in the game, it was one of my better maps on the game. I just enjoyed it. It was a, a decent size. It always felt like there were a lot of gunfights going on. I just felt like it suited my play style. I could move around a lot of SMGs, you know, pop dead silence and just go on kill streaks. And I think a lot of my success and my best gameplays have come on this map. Um, so for me, Candle Hideout is number one, the best map in Modern Warfare 2019, in my opinion. Um, but like I say, I'm a respawn player, um, so that is kind of where my opinion is coming from. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do hit the like button down below. And like I said earlier in the video, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Um, you know, do you agree with me, disagree with me? What would you swap around? What would you move around? Let me know down in the comment section, guys. If you are brand new around here and want to find your way back for more, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, I hope everyone has a great day, and I'll catch you all in the next one.